So that is right, Minecraft Java Edition players that want to play Minecraft Java Edition on their Windows PC or their Windows PC handheld, which is what this series is all about. Whether it's a cheap a Neo Next Lite that is kind of a lower end PC handheld or an Asus Rogue Ally X, this guide or these guides will work for you. Don't forget to check out my playlist that has a whole bunch of other guides for Forge or Fabric or even just play Minecraft Java Edition mods and all that kind of stuff in the description of the video. If you don't know where the description of the video is in 2025, then maybe you should learn how to use YouTube. It's under the more section. That's the description of the video. It doesn't say description anymore. It says more. Now, the first thing we're going to do is navigate to get CurseForge. So curseforge.com and we're going to click on get CurseForge app. Now we're going to download the standalone app, not the Overwolf app. We're just gonna download the standalone app and that's because we're just downloading this for Minecraft. Wait for it to download and now we're going to go into our downloads folder and click on the installer. Now, if you're using a touch screen, this works as well. I'm just using a mouse and keyboard because it's easier for me to actually show you guys how to set all this up. Click on the next icon, click on I accept because I am over 18 years old. If you're not over 18 years old and something happens and stuff, things that shouldn't happen happen, then that's not my issue. That's between you and CurseForge. Click next. Now wait for it to download and do its thing. Depending on your internet speed, it should download pretty fast. It's not really that big of a file. However, some internet speeds might not be as great. Now we're going to follow these prompts. Click on continue. Click continue again, and now we're just gonna continue as a guest. I'm not logging into my CurseForge account, but I am going to select Minecraft, click on continue, and now you're gonna notice that we have this page right here. Now, if you click on the home icon, this will give you like other apps and games and stuff like that. That's not really necessary for our case because we're just gonna be using this for Minecraft. Now, there's other ways that we can actually set this up. We can check out our add-ons, our languages, advanced settings, uh, privacy settings, all that kind of stuff. You can change different things in here, like if you want it to open up Discord and all that kind of stuff, but we're not doing any of that. Now, when we create our first mod pack, basically, was what we're doing inside of the CurseForge settings, we are going to click on that X icon, and what we're gonna do here is basically create a custom profile. Now, the login button doesn't show up here until we start creating the log or the actual custom profile. Um, I haven't found a way to actually manipulate it so that it'll show up automatically. Let's close out of everything else here and close out of Java Minecraft because I have that open up in the background. Obviously, you need to have that installed on your computer as well so it'll actually work. So let's create a custom profile. Let's name this Forge horror mod pack okay we're just going to name it that just to keep it simple and that's because we already used modrinth for this and we're going to carry over some of our mods from modrinth so that it makes it a lot easier for us but i'm going to show you how to use curseforge as well so we're going to select forge as you can see here we can use fabric and neoforge and vanilla and all that kind of stuff using curseforge it's basically just another loader launcher kind of thing but you still have to log into your java minecraft account that owns java minecraft so click on create and then we're going to wait for it to install all the necessary files it's going to download a whole bunch of stuff here and then download the java runtimes that are necessary for 1.20.1 to actually load and apply a whole bunch of different stuff inside of the actual app so let's wait for that to do its thing okay now that that's downloaded we can click on play now it's going to say do you want to log in so yes we are going to log in uh, with our Microsoft account and it's going to click on uh, give us an option to copy and open so we can copy this so highlight it copy with your control C click on copy and open and it should allow us to actually log into our account so paste that in there click on allow access now this should be your actual Microsoft account that um, basically is associated with your Java Minecraft account so I'm going to enter all those details obviously I'm going to blur this out so you don't see it and I have an authenticator app that pops up so that I can actually log in. And that is just more of a security measure so that people can't access my account without me approving it. I'm going to click on yes for stay logged in, click accept for CurseForge, and basically you should be all done. Now we're going to wait to see if that actually set it up, which it should. As you can see on the top right hand side, there's my account, DNA Mobile, and now I'm logged in. Now I like to click play before I start anything so that the necessary files and everything are loaded into the Forge mod pack. Again, we're basically creating a mod pack here. 
this is what we're doing. We're creating a mod pack so that we can just play with our own mod pack. Don't get this confused with mod packs because mod packs are completely different, but you can edit mod packs. And I'm gonna have a video about that as well. So I'm gonna have a video about how you can actually go ahead and edit your own mod packs because there's like ones that need you to add other things like RL Craft, for example, that does need you to edit your mod pack. Now on my other screen, because I have this set up to extended, there is another window that pops up that shows you a whole bunch of data and logs and everything. You don't need to worry about that, but I'm just letting you know that on my other screen, it actually shows up here. So I can actually just drag this up here and show you it. This is the log screen. Now I'm just gonna minimize it. It doesn't really need to be there, but I'm just showing you that that exists. And now we just have our main Minecraft screen here. Now, what we're going to do after this loads is we're going to go into Modrinth and grab all of our mods that we copied into Modrinth so that we don't have to re-download mods mods but i am also going to show you how to download mods as well so let's click on the mod pack and add more content so if you go into um, this minecraft folder right here this will show you all your mod packs that you created if you created a whole bunch of different ones so as you notice i spelt froge wrong so i'm going to click on the three dots and i can change the profile name to make sure that I name this properly to Forge Horror Mod Pack. And don't forget, again, this also works on just PC as well. Like this is just a PC with a built-in controller that you can use on the go and play Minecraft Java Edition with. So let's click on add more content and I'm gonna look for a mod called Project Redacted, okay? And we're gonna see if we can find that mod. And if it doesn't show up, oh, there it is right there. We can click on install. So what this does is it automatically installs it directly to our mod pack that we're using right now. And it should just download it directly into our mods folder. And I'm gonna show you how to find that in a second as well. Now let's just wait for it to download. It shouldn't be that long because it's not a big file. And there we go. Now let's click on the exit icon on the top right hand side that has a circle. And now you can see our mod is inside of our folder but how do we see these folders so what we can do here is click on the three line or the three dots click on open folder and then you can see all of your other configuration files in your mods folder and all that kind of stuff in here so in here there's that project redacted as you can see it automatically downloaded it and put it into that folder now what was i saying earlier about going to modrinth well what i was saying was that i'm going to go and open up modrinth so let's first do that not the play store or whatever modern app, <laughs> the Windows Store. And the reason why is because we've already installed mods on Modernth that will work on CurseForge. It's just because I think Modernth is a little bit more straightforward in my opinion, but that is all up to you. I don't know, everybody has their own opinions about things, but I thought I'd do a video about CurseForge just so that people understand how to use it as well. Now, what I'm gonna do here is click on the Forge profile that we ended up setting up um, with controllable and dynamic FPS and embedding and all that kind of stuff so that we can copy this information over to CurseForge. So how do we do that? We go to the three dots, go to open folder, and we could go into the mods folder and literally just copy everything in here. I'm not going to copy the God mod because I already have the project redacted, so I'm not sure if that's going to work, but you can mess around with stuff and see if it works. And now what I'm going to do is literally just copy this all over here. Actually, I'm not going to paste it. I'm going to copy it. So basically control C and V and then navigate back to CurseForge. Okay. Now see how the, the mods don't show up. Well, just click on the refresh button. It should automatically just load them all in here and we should be good to go. Now, these are all the mods that we ended up setting up with Modrinth and Modrinth we used Forge as well, so they should work just fine. There's no issues whatsoever. And how do we check that? Well, we could actually just technically just click on the play button and see if everything loads the way it's supposed to. And if you didn't follow my video about how to set up Forge with Modrinth, then go and check that out now. Otherwise, again, you could just manually go to add more content and add all of these other mods. So like Dynamic FPS, Cloth Config, Controllable, which helps you uh, set up your controller for your PC handheld like your Asus Rogue Ally or your Ally X or your One X player or the A Neo Next Lite that we're using in this guide. And that's basically about it. Now go enjoy playing with some horror mods because this, well, or whatever mods you want to. You don't have to play horror mods, but I just like playing horror mods because I like horror stuff. And enjoy using the controller. I've set up the controller with you guys as well. As you can see here, all the mods are loaded and yeah, the controller profile, all that kind of stuff. You'll have to like set it up yourself with your actual controller, but this is basically it. Not really that much to understand for setting up mods with CurseForge. That's about it. If you want to subscribe to the channel, then do so. Otherwise, bye. -bye.